guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. Lately, I've been working on a lot of dryers and I've been starting to see the most frequent problems on them. So this video will be just going over a few of those problems, especially the most common ones that I see on pretty much a daily basis. And before I begin, let's go over some basics. First of all, you're going to need to know how to disassemble your dryer. I'm not telling you you should go watch a different video. You should watch it, you will learn a lot. But what you should do is look at your dryer, see what brand it is, for example, mine is a Maytag Performa. Go on YouTube and type in how to disassemble a Maytag Performa dryer. Because the hardest part of fixing your dryer really is taking it apart. Another thing you should figure out if you don't know this already is, is your dryer gas or electric? A really easy way to tell is to look behind it. I'll pull mine out just a little bit. My vent just came undone. Generally in the field when I work, I try not to move dryers because not all vents are as nice in mine as mine and they don't go back as easy. Um, but anyway, uh, look behind your dryer and if you see a gas line coming in, it's either going to be flexible like that or a solid pipe. In that case, you can't move it a lot or if you do have to move it all the way out, you have to take apart the piping. But anyways, you will either see some gas pipe going in there with a shutoff like this right here. Mine is really old, probably needs to be replaced sometime soon. Or you will see a thick cord, usually it's a big black thick cord like this right here, for example, and it'll be going into a round outlet, a 240 volt outlet. If you see that, that means your dryer is electric. And one more thing you will probably need to know is your model and serial. The model and serial, almost all the time, will be found either on the inside of the door, somewhere in the panel here, or it'll be on the door itself. To order parts, you will need to have your model and serial and the brand of your appliance. And once in a while, I'll find the model and serial in the back right here. Alright, so now that the introduction is over, let's get to it and see what some of the most frequent fixes are. Ooh, and I forgot a very juicy piece of information. This is really going to help you out. So, wherever your lint screen is, for example, my lint screen is right here, right in the front. That is where all your thermostats your thermal fuse, thermistor, and all that stuff is going to be. If your lid screen is on top, right here, you pull it out, all your thermostats, your cycling stats, your thermal fuses, and all that will be in the back. So don't even bother taking apart the front. You will need to pull your dryer out and get to it from the back. Once I figured that out, that saved me a lot of time. And before you start, if you have an electric dryer, make sure you unplug that big thing. If you have a gas dryer, it'll be a regular 120 plug. Make sure you go ahead and unplug that so you don't short something out as you're taking the doors apart. And one last thing you should know, the laundry machines can be very sharp and they can cut your finger very quick. So gloves do help. Okay, so let's begin. I have a gas Maytag dryer with the lint screen in the front. That means all my stuff that I need to look at will be in the front. So I can set that lint screen aside and start taking this bad boy apart. A lot of dryers will have clips right on top. Mine does, just like most. There are usually just two of them. One under, right between the top lid and the front panel. One here and one here. So if you press, if you press those clips and hold it up, sometimes it's a really tight or a snug fit. If this keeps dropping down and closing on you, just stick a screwdriver in here so it holds it open and get the other one. Just like that. And that will get your top open. As you can see, you can't get it open much further because of the vent, so you have to pull it out. And another thing I forgot to mention, if you have a gas dryer, be careful of how far you're pulling that thing out, otherwise you might cause a gas leak. So pull it out a little bit, check how your gas line is doing, pull it out some more, check again, just make sure you don't kink anything. So anyways, we got the top off, Mine stays like this. Sometimes you can lean it all the way back to the wall. And really, you don't need to take the top off completely. So I just like to leave it like that. Or sometimes if I can't lean it, that's okay. I just hold it with my shoulder. Because all you need to do is just get to two screws most of the time on most dryers. Maybe yours will be different. Like a Samsung, that's completely different. Uh, but on mine, there's two screws. One inside here and one inside over here. They are in the same spots. So once I take those two screws out... I will be able to take this door off. And right here we have the belt. 
as you can see my belt is still here and it's still tight. If you don't see a belt here that means your belt is probably torn and laying on the bottom of the machine. And another indicator will be if you reach in and try to spin your drum it'll spin really easy. Right now mine is kind of tight, hard to spin. If your belt is ripped your drum will just be rolling like no tomorrow. So in my case it's just two quarter inch screws on the sides here. I'll take them both out. And as you can see, my front panel just comes right off. And usually, usually a lot of dryers will just have clips on the bottom. So you have to just lift this front panel to get it off those clips. As you can see, there's the clips. And right there, if you look down below, that's the holes where it goes into. So there's a clip on the other side as well. There's just two of them. A lot of dryers will have this same setup. And at this point, you can lower the top lid if you want. You don't really need to have it standing up there. A lot of times you'll have your door switch right here on the side. You can either start disconnecting all these wires and just move them out of the way so you can take the whole door off. Or you could just push your door out of the way like this. That way it's out of the way and you have access to the front. Well, yikes! For a guy that fixes dryers, this is pretty embarrassing. Uh, as you can see, my windscreen housing here is in pretty sorry shape. This is where the windscreen goes in right here. And whatever gets by the windscreen usually ends up in this hole right here. Sometimes dryers will have that windscreen housing right here, by the way. Two or three screws and that whole thing will come out and you'll be able to see it and in, see inside of it just like this one. In my case, it comes with the whole piece right here. And just in case somebody's wondering, these two strips right here, those are your sensors. So if your dryer has automatic sensors, um, or you know, automatic dry, intelligent dry, different dryers call it different things. These are the sensors that will basically measure the temperature of your clothes and make sure that everything dries out before shutting the dryer off. These sensor pads very rarely go bad, so most likely you won't have to deal with that. But anyways, before I continue, I probably want to just get some of that stuff out of there. Look at that, that looks way better already. If you want to really be diligent about it, you can stick a screwdriver in here or stick a brush in there, vacuum it all out. Sometimes you take these dryers apart and there's just going to be a half an inch of lint all over them. But I'm not going to get too excited right now in the video. Uh, I can clean this up a little later. Let's continue with the troubleshooting and find out what the most common fixes are. So let's start by taking out the drum. That will help you see the whole picture. At first when I started, taking that belt off was easy. Putting that belt back on was a different story. But either way, usually you'll have to do this blindly. Take it off and put it back on. So find some spaces where you can stick your hands in. In my case, I really only have this side right here. And you can't really see, I don't think the camera will be able to see either what I'm doing, but I'll show you after I take the drum out. Basically, you're going for the motor pulley and the tensioner at the same time. You depress the tensioner and then take that belt off the motor pulley. I'll explain this a little better once I get this drum out. That will release the belt and see how loose it is now. That takes it off that pulley and the motor. And then you can just lift up. If you have a rear bearing in the back, you're going to have to put some more pressure on it. Mines are just two rollers in the back. And I just take it off those two rollers. That actually kind of came out stiff too. And then sometimes the belt will get stuck on the sides. Just kind of wiggle the drum and it'll come out. And the belt is kind of nice, you can hold the whole drum with it. And here we have an empty dryer, no drum. So as I was saying, let's just go over that real quick. If you took off your belt or if you're struggling putting it back on, the easiest way to do this is keep in mind that this right here is the tensioner pulley. There's the tensioner wheel. If there's uneven wear, which mine has, 
it might start to screech and it almost sounds like metal on metal. A lot of times it's just this pulley right here. It's better to replace the pulley and the arm. So if you're going to order a new pulley, I would get the assembly, not just the pulley wheel. But anyway, if you're putting the belt back on blindly, so you have your hands underneath the drum or your hand, keep in mind, this is the tensioner and the belt needs to go on here. The groovy side, one side of the belt is smooth and the other side is groovy. It has grooves on it. Put the grooves towards the motor pulley and the other side on the tensioner. So in my case, you got the drum right here. The belt will come around and it'll go in here. You can almost like loop it right here and then stick that loop underneath the pulley. You're going to have to put tension on the pulley and then put that loop onto the motor pulley right here. And that will keep the tension on the belt. So hopefully you understood that, but honestly, the first couple times it is quite a pain. You'll probably be struggling for a little bit putting that on. And once you have your belt back on, make sure that you feel around it, open up the top lid and look around so that the belt is not twisted anywhere and it's all lined up. And most dryers, the grooved side of the belt will be toward the drum. I apologize, I'm totally going off track. Anyway, so let's say your dryer is not heating or it's not turning on at all. The most common problem for that is a thermal fuse. A thermal fuse will either look like a white, long fuse. It's a one-time blow fuse. If that thing blows, it's not resettable. It's not automatic resettable. So you have to replace it every time. It'll either be a long thing, it'll look like an oval, a little bit like an egg, or in my case, it'll look like this little black disc right here. Here. And the most common reason why those thermal fuses blow is because there's a lack of airflow or your unit got too hot. So it's almost like a safety switch to prevent the dryer from overheating, from melting things and stuff like that. So usually what happens is like all that buildup I had in here, that alone could have caused that thermal fuse to blow. Or maybe your vent in the back is plugged. A lot of times I see the dryer hood outside. Just walk around your house, look at all the hoods outside. The ones that have a bunch of lint underneath, that's the dryer vent. Make sure you lift up the flapper. Sometimes it'll be three flappers, sometimes one, or maybe it'll just be a net. So check that out. Make sure nothing is plugged. So the most common reason that thermal fuse blows, honestly, like out of five dryer calls, one or two will be that thermal fuse. Once again, the most common reason is because you have a lack of airflow. Either you have a bunch of stuff in here or the vent is plugged. Once in a while, this is more rare, but this is the blower wheel right in here. <clears throat> if you look at it, sometimes this hub right here, mine looks kind of nasty with all this hair on it. I apologize. I will clean it up later for future videos. But if you look at it, sometimes this, uh, the wheel hub, will be cracked. Sometimes the crack will even go right here. And what happens is the shaft is spinning, but the wheel, the wheel is not. It's only like spinning at half speed. And sometimes that's even noticeable when your dryer turns off, you can still hear something spinning for a little bit before it completely shuts off. That would cause the dryer to overheat as well. But like I said, that rarely ever happens. Usually it's just something plugged in the vent or the lint screen housing. Now, to check that thermal fuse, you will need a multimeter, uh, even if it's just a cheap one, if it can check ohms or resistance, that little omega symbol, or continuity is even better because it makes a beeping sound if it has continuity. That's all you will need, just some meter that has that option. But if you don't have a meter and you take your dryer apart and you see that it's plugged with a bunch of lint inside and out, and your vent, when you disconnect it, you see a bunch of lint there, then chances are your thermal fuse is blown. You can just go ahead and blindly replace it. They're pretty cheap. They're like anywhere from five to $10. So after you clean all that lint out of there, you can just go ahead and replace that. And most likely that will solve your problem. So to check your thermal fuse, it's best to pull both wires off, but really you only have to pull one off. I like to pull them both off just to be extra sure. Pull both wires off. It helps to do this with the needle nose, kind of wiggle the connectors as you're pulling them off and they should slide off fairly easily. Sometimes they get stuck on there, you have to put a little more pressure on them. But anyways, you have these two connectors. You put your meter right next to them. I have mine set to continuity. And this should have continuity. As you can see, it's beeping. If you see OL, like this, that means the thermal fuse is blown and you need to replace that thermal fuse. Also, 
this operating thermostat right here works the same way. Sometimes the operating thermostat can be bad too. This basically cycles the dryer on and off, the burner, to control how hot it gets. Once in a while it'll be defective and it'll get too hot or it'll be open altogether. And you can check this the same way as well. Just pull the two connectors off. The two big connectors, the small ones right here, that's just a heater. You don't need to check that. You're only checking the big connectors on the sides. So once again, you can put your both leads on both connectors. And if you have continuity, that means that thing is good. Or if you have a high limit, you can check that too. Sometimes you're gonna have multiple thermostats. Um, I have a flame sensor right here. This black box on the side, which also can be checked the same way. These don't go bad very often, but they can. And to check them, I'm not gonna pull the wires off because these are kinda crunched on there. Same way, you would pull the wires off, check for continuity. If there's continuity, then that thing's good. If there, if it's OL, then you gotta have it replaced. So the thermal fuse is the number one most frequent problem I see in dryers, both electric and gas. And on gas dryers, the second most common is either the igniter itself, the thing that lights the gas, or the gas valve coils, which are these two black things right here on top of the gas valve. These are actually replaceable, and they're very easy to replace. <clears throat> these two screws come out. Actually, you know what, I'll just show you real quick, just so you know what that looks like. If you do have a gas dryer, what that'll look like is your igniter will glow. You'll see an orange glow. Of course, you're only going to see this if you have like a kick panel or a sight glass on the bottom of your dryer. Uh, your igniter will glow. But the gas valve will not open. So right here, here's the gas valve coils. Both of them. These can be replaced, they're also fairly cheap. And if you have a multimeter, you can check them pretty easily. The same way you would check a thermal fuse. So you pull the connector off, you put the two leads on the pins, and you should have continuity between the two pins. Well that's odd guys. I know my gas valve coil is good and usually the continuity would beep. For some reason right now it's showing me OL, but if I go to resistance, the ohm readings, I do have resistance, as you can see. So I'm not sure, maybe the resistance is really small, that's why it's not picking it up. But this coil is good, and once again I guess this proves that the best way to check resistance is to actually put it on the resistance setting and not continuity. So anyways, that's how you would check the gas valve coil. And the other one is the same, but it has three pins. So you would just check for resistance between you know the left side and the middle, then the right side and the middle and then the right side and the left side. They're really cheap parts and it is a fairly common thing to go bad. And when you're putting the bracket on, see how there's two small holes right here? Those two small holes go on these inserts right here on top of the gas valve coils. If you don't line them up, then you're gonna have a difficult time trying to put this on. Another important component on a gas dryer is your igniter, which is usually gonna be in the burner tube. Here's your burner. And right next to the burner will be the igniter. It's kind of hard to see on camera. It's kind of inside there. But to check that, all you got to do is find the connector from the igniter. This, for example, you might have to put a flat head screwdriver in here to try to pry this connector off. These connectors usually come off pretty hard. So unplug that and just check those two pins for continuity or for resistance. There should be resistance there. If it's OL, that means your igniter is burnt out and you need a new igniter. And of course you got the main component, the drive motor. Honestly, the drive motor very rarely goes out. I seldom see that the drive motor is out. And if it does go out, a lot of times you will smell like a burnt electrical smell. But most likely the motor is not your problem. And I totally missed this one, but maybe, just maybe, your dryer simply does not have power. If you have a meter, set it to voltage and check your outlet for power. If you have a 220 outlet, then it's gonna be the right and left side. In my case, it'll just be the right and left here. So we got the hot, the skinny prawn, and then the neutral is the wide. Stick your leads in there. And as you can see, I have 120 volts. 
once in a while your breaker will trip or something and you're going to have zero and you go and tear apart your whole entire dryer, check everything, everything's good and it turns out you simply just don't have voltage. Now, another thing to be wary of, if you have your meter on ohms or resistance and you plug your leads into an outlet, can you take a guess what that will mean for you? That will mean you need a new meter. Make sure you do not check voltage with this setting on ohms or continuity because that will blow your meter. And one last thing guys, if you use fabric softener sheets, they're, you know, the little waxy stuff, with time, those will plug up your lint screen. And an easy way to check if your lint screen is plugged up is pour some water over it. So find a sink, a laundry tub will do best if you have one handy, and pour some water on top of your lint screen. The water should very freely flow right through the lint screen. If you see it pooling up, that means your lint screen is plugged up. You can either try cleaning it, or you can just go ahead and order yourself a new lint screen. I went over a lot of stuff today, but I know I can't cover everything, so if you're having dryer problems and you can't figure it out, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to help you there. Don't forget to mash that like button on your way out, and we'll see you next time.